بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم today we are going to talk about diseases of skin and in diseases of the skin we are going to tackle this issue or dermatopathology in a series of four lectures this first lecture will be about the terminology and some of the most common pigmentation disorders and terminology is very important in skin diseases and you have to learn by heart so this is the skin you have to be familiar with the skin it is very simple in histology but it is also complicated organ because it is the largest organ in the body you have to be used to the layers of the skin and you have to be used to disease of the skin the presentation outlines the intended learning outcomes, ILOs are usual, histology of skin, because without knowing the normal histology, we cannot know the diseases that occur in the skin. The terminology of skin disease that is very important, and this is the core of our uh, lecture, and the most common pigmentation uh, disorders. We just give names, we do not go into pathology of these uh, lesions. And then you find the quiz section and the references or the further learning resources that you can go to in order to increase your knowledge. The intended learning outcomes by the end of this lecture, the learner should be able to describe the normal skin histology. So this is one of the most important learning outcomes to describe the normal skin histology. And number two, to define the common terms used to describe the macroscopic skin lesions and number three to define the common terms used to describe the microscopic features of skin lesions so number two is about macroscopic that is to say the naked eye appearance of skin lesions and this is number three the microscopic features of skin lesions and to define and describe some of the most common pigmentation disorders this is the normal histology of the skin the skin is generally composed of uh, epidermis as you can see here and then you have the dermis layer and then the subcutis or the hypodermis we usually refer to skin as dermis and epidermis and dermis you have to be used to structures so in the epidermis you are going to see layers and then the you can see the in the dermis the structures that, that are there and you have to be used to this structure the hair shaft the opening of the sweat dot in the dermal papillae and then you have to know the adductor pili muscle in the sebaceous glands and the sweat crying sweat glands and then you see the higher follicle you have to be used to all these structures and then you have to be used to the dermal nerve fibers that are scattered in the skin and the pacinian proboscis for the receptors for pain. The skin histology is composed of uh, superficial layer of stratum corneum and then you have the stratum lucidum and then you have the stratum granulosum and then you have the stratum spinosum this is the stratum spinosum and then you have the stratum basale if you go from below and then you can become the, the dermis and then, uh, so if you want to go from downwards upwards you have the dermis you have the base stratum basale stratum spinosum stratum granulosum stratum lucidum and the stratum corneum so the skin is composed of epidermis and dermis. The epidermis, there are four major layers. These are the, from downwards upwards. The basal layer, or known as stratum basale. The squamous cell layer, stratum spinosum, as you can see in the picture. The pictures are very important in the histology. And then you have the granular layer, or stratum granulosum. Here is stratum granulosum. 
and then you have the horny layer composed of striatum lucidum and striatum corneum particularly in the sick skin you find this layer this is another picture of the same the skin you have to be used to if you go from upwards downwards you find the striatum uh, corneum here and then you can see the uh, striatum lucidum striatum granulosum striatum spinosum taking the most part or many layers of the squamous cells and then you find the striatum basale these are the basal layers that are responsible for producing these upper upper layers the dermis is simple and is composed of papillary dermis and reticular dermis so if we can see there is, this is the reticular dermis and this is what we call the papillary dermis that part that intervenes with the with the epidermis we call it the papillary dermis and the lower down is the reticular dermis and there you can revise the uh, layers of the epidermis striatum corneum striatum lucidum striatum gran you have to be used to granulosum spinosum and the striatum basale and then you find the dermal epidermal junction there are skin appendages that include higher follicles as you have seen in previous picture then the sebaceous glands and the sweat glands all these are we call them skin appendages and, and sometimes you find diseases of skin that is related to skin appendages these are the layers of the skin and you can see the sebaceous and the and the uh, sweat glands and you can see these structures the cells in the skin they include keratinocytes and these are the squamous cells they compose the majority of skin of uh, skin cells the keratinocytes in addition they are melanocytes they are not too many but they give the melanin pigment that gives us our characteristic color and then we have the basal cells as we have seen and they are langer hand cells of the macrophage monocyte series they are responsible for the immune system and then you find the Merkel cells that have many functions some of them are for uh, pressure or sensory cells and then you have the glandular epithelial cells as you have seen sebaceous and sweat gland uh, cells and then we have the lymphocytes and other blood derived cells that come from the circulation in addition to connective uh, tissue cells adipocytes, fibrocytes, nerves, and endothelial cells. Why do we mention the cells in the skin? Because any of these cells can give rise to tumor, whether benign or malignant. Therefore, we have to put in mind that what are the cells that are there in the skin. By recognizing them, you can recognize what tumors can arise. So each of these cells can give rise to uh, tumors of the skin therefore you have to be familiar with the cells in the in the skin another uh, picture of the uh, skin striatum corneum particularly in uh, thick parts of the skin these are dead cells filled with keratin and then you have the striatum uh, lucidum layer and then you have the striatum granulosum and then you have the striatum uh, spinosum that we call the keratinocytes and deeper layer you find the striatum basale and you can find melanocytes the secret melanin and then the Merkel cell and the sensory neuron of the cell. and then the dermis another picture uh, demonstrating particularly the uh, Merkel cell or the tactile disc so that you can recognize them these are the hair shafts this is the epidermis and this is the the dermis another uh, photomicrograph of the normal skin you have to be used to you have to know it by heart 
and as we mentioned they are appendages the hair follicles these are the hair follicles this is selected maybe the base of the hair follicles and then the sebaceous glands as you can uh, see many of them sebaceous uh, glands and then the, the sweat glands sometimes they are found here and there the sweat glands and now we come to a basic question in your opinion and for you as a doctor which of the following is the most important means for diagnosing skin diseases number one using a stethoscope number two asking for laboratory test vision of the lesion or have a look at the lesion hearing the patient complain which of which of these means is the best in diagnosing skin diseases definitely it is viewing or vision of the lesion if you look at the lesion you can say what is it so description of skin lesions is the most important step in diagnosis of skin disease when you see something and you describe it is the most important thing so whether you you answer strongly agree agree or do not know or disagree or strongly disagree the answer is definitely that you strongly agree that the description of the lesion is the most important thing in the diagnosis of skin lesions therefore the basic language of dermatology is by macroscopic description that is the next eye description or the microscopic descriptive, descriptive terms you have to be familiar with the essential terms describing skin disease there is no other way you have to be familiar with these terms what do they mean and you have to know what are these terms the macroscopic or clinical terms that are used to describe uh, diseases or lesions of the skin are the following they are not diagnoses these are just clinical descriptive terms macroscopic naked eye the macule you have to know what is a macule patch you have to be familiar with patch what is patch papule nodule plague vesicle bulla blister pustule wheel scale lignification excoriation these are onycholysis these are descriptive terms that you have to be used to you can find between two brackets some arabic translation of this from uh, google translate the for to simplify things for you but you have to be familiar with these uh, terms a macule is a circumscribed lesion of less than five millimeter in diameter characterized by flatness and usually discolored so macule is a circumscribed lesion less than five millimeters usually we talk in millimeters when talking about skin lesions when we say something is less than five millimeter or than more than five millimeter so a macule is a circumscribed lesion of less than five millimeter in diameter characterized by flatness it is not raised it is flat part of the skin it cannot be touched it can be seen by the eye and not by the touch unusually discarded the larger one is a patch so the patch is a circumscribed lesion of greater than five millimeter in diameter characterized by flatness and usually discolored it is a larger than the than the macule a macule is smaller less than five millimeter a patch is a larger flat discolored lesion so the same comes you can see the patch the third term here is a papule as you can see a papule is an elevated dome shaped or flat topped lesion less than five millimeter across so a papule is palpable but it is small so it is elevated dome shaped or flat topped lesion less than five millimeter in 
diameter so you can see a plaque is uh, multiple papules together nodule is an elevated lesion with a spherical contour greater than five millimeter across so a nodule is more than five millimeter a papule is less than five millimeters when it is larger we call it nodule the nodule can be exophytic nodule or can be endophytic nodule exophytic nodules are palpable and large a plaque is an elevated flat top lesion usually greater than five millimeter across it may be caused by coalescent papules as we have seen or said earlier many uh, papules can form a plaque this uh, is the uh, plaque it is the combination of many uh, uniting together papules that form the plaque a blister is a common term used for vesicle or bulla so what is a vesicle a vesicle is a fluid filled rays lesion less than five millimeter across whereas a bulla is a fluid filled raised lesion greater than five millimeter across so you can see here two vesicles fluid filled they are filled with fluid and if they are small we call them vesicle when they are large we call them bulla the plural is bully these are vesicles less than five millimeter uh, fluid filled lesions skin vesicles in the abdomen you are going to know what disease is called vesicles a pustule pustule as the name indicates pustule so this, this is a discrete pus filled raised lesion any pus filled raised lesion we call it pustule if fluid filled we call it vesicle or bulla based on the size but when it is full of pus we call it pustule how pustules develop particularly an example for the common disease acne you find this is a normal follicle uh, follicle you find the sebaceous glands and when there is blockage of the pores through which the sebaceous material goes out there will be growth of bacteria certain types of bacteria crying bacteria and acne and then the wall ruptures to form the pustule that you have seen earlier pus. a wheel is an itchy transient elevated lesion with variable blanching and erythema formed as a result of dermal edema so this is the wheel wheel is an itchy transient it is not permanent it comes and goes maybe per may persist for hours or a few days so it is a wheel itchy transient elevated lesion with variable blanching and erythema erythema means redness it becomes red formed as a result of dermal edema scale a scale is a dry horny plate like excrescence usually as a result of imperfect cornification that is to say keratinization so this is a scale it looks like a fish scale or something like this dry horny plate like it is just like a plate or something put in and usually as a result of keratinization lignification is thickened and rough skin so in lignification it is a thickened and rough skin characterized by prominent skin markings usually the result of repeated rubbing or due to itching in susceptible uh, persons so this is we call it lignification exocoriation is traumatic lesion characterized by breakage of the epidermis causing raw linear area that is to say deep scratch deep scratch this is another exploration there is loss of the epidermis or a lesion or breakage in the epidermis so you can see other terms like fissure when there is a cut 
or erosion when there is superficial loss of the epidermis or it can become an ulcer that goes deeper into the involving even the dermis going from the epidermis and then reaching the, the dermis another term onycholysis onycholysis we mean separation of the nail plate from the nail bed as you can see in this picture when there is separation separation of the nail plate from the nail bed we call it onycholysis whenever you find the word the word onyco it means nail so onycholysis is the separation of the nail plate from the nail bed after finishing the macroscopic terms now we come to the microscopic or the histologic terms and these terms are also very important and you have to read many times so that you can recognize them and the same as we mentioned in the macroscopic terms the microscopic terms are not diagnoses they are just descriptive terms so we have the microscopic terms hyperkeratosis parakeratosis hypergranulosis acanthosis papillomatosis acantholysis spongiosis hydropic swelling or ballooning exocytosis erosion ulceration vacuolization and lentignos these are the microscopic terms that i'm going to explain in the coming slides and on your right hand you can find some trans arabic translation of these terms from uh, uh, google translate you can translate this so as to simplify things for you because you have to recognize these microscopic uh, terms the hyperkeratosis is thickening of the stratum corneum often associated with qualitative abnormality of the keratin so you can see hyper keratosis abundant keratin in the stratum corneum you can see all oh, this is keratin this is hyper keratosis it is not a difficult term and then we have the parakeratosis by parakeratosis we mean the presence of nucleated cells in the upper layers of the skin so parakeratosis modes of keratinization characterized by the retention of the nuclei in the stratum corneum on mucous membranes parakeratosis is normal but we have the, this skin where there is keratin these cells should not be nucleated but here we find these nuclei in the in the stratum corneum this is we call parakeratosis we are going to recognize which diseases are associated with this microscopic feature hypergranulosis means hyperplasia of the stratum granulosum often due to intense rubbing due to itching and rubbing you find this hypergranulosis this is a picture to demonstrate hypergranulosis this is a normal skin you can see the granular layer uh, not uh, too not too much thick when there is granular cell hyperplasia hyper uh, and thickness you find hypergranulosis hyperplasia of the uh, stratum granulosum you see many layers many layers here the acanthosis means diffuse epidermal hyperplasia you can see how many layers are there in this epidermis we call it acanthosis diffuse epidermal hyperplasia all layers are uh, hyperplastic you can see these areas of hyperplasia under the microscope acanthosis we have the term papillomatosis it means surface elevation 
caused by hyperplasia, hyperplasia and enlargement of the contiguous dermal papillae. These are papillomatosis. Papillomatosis. You see the dermal papillae going inside the epidermal layer. This is papillomatosis. This keratosis is another term in which abnormal keratinization occurring prematurely within the individual cells or groups of cells below the stratum granulosum who find keratin layers in the deeper layers. This is dyskeratosis, generally the same as dysplasia. Dyskeratosis, you find keratin beneath the uh, stratum granulosum it should be above the stratum granulosum the keratin layer but when it comes below the stratum granulosum we call it dyskeratosis we have another term acantholysis acantholysis means loss of intercellular connections resulting in loss of cohesion between keratinocytes they are separated so there is acantholysis loss of intercellular between the cells connections resulting in loss of cohesion between keratinocytes spongiosis is intercellular edema of the epidermis when there is edema between the cells we call it spongiosis it looks like sponge this is a spongiosis we have hydropic swelling or ballooning and here we find intracellular edema within the cells within the cells you find edema intracellular edema of keratinocytes we call it hydropic swelling or ballooning exocytosis we mean infiltration of the epidermis by inflammatory or circulating blood cells Whenever you find a lot of circulating blood cells invading the epidermis, we call it exocytosis. And we, ha we have the term erosion, you used to it, you have seen it macroscopically. It means discontinuity of the skin exhibiting incomplete loss of the epidermis. This is, we have seen previously, facial ulcer and erosion, and this is erosion of the skin. Ulceration is another term that can be seen macroscopically or microscopically and it means discontinuity of the skin exhibiting complete loss of the epidermis and often portions of the dermis and even subcutaneous fat. So uh, ulceration is deeper form of uh, to deeper than the exocoriation. So you can see here this skin ulcers they can go deeper and this is in the histology you see there is discontinuity or loss of the epidermis you just see the dermis under the microscope this is called ulceration vacuolization means formation of vacuoles within or adjacent to cells vacuolization you see the cell are appears as vacuoles often refers to basal cell basement membrane zone area of vacuolization it is similar to hydropic uh, or uh, balloon the lentignos um, means referring to a linear pattern of melanocyte proliferation within the epidermal basal cell layer so you can see this is lentignos lentignos in microscope you see there is deposition of melanocytes or proliferation of melanocytes and this is usually within the epidermal basal cell basal cell layer lentignos melanocytic hyperplasia can occur as a reactive change or as part of a neoplasm of melanocytes as you are going to know in the coming lectures now we have some pigmentation disorders that you can mm, see and you can describe but we are not going into details of these disorders we have the term vitiligo freckle of 
Ephelis, Melasma, Lentigo, Nevus, and Dyspelastic Nevus. Malignant melanoma. All these are pigmentation disorders that we are going to see. Um, we can talk about the nevi, nevus, and the melanoma in a coming lecture, but the other terms are just for description that you know. We have the vitiligo that we all know, hypopigmentation of the skin vitiligo, which is associated with certain diseases or can, or can be idiopathic vitiligo. This is another picture for vitiligo you have to be used to these are the freckles discoloration freckles of the skin producing certain areas with darker with darker lesions you can see freckles or ifles and then we have the melasma it is broader pigmentations also called mask of pregnancy you can see many hyperpigmented areas we call it melasma is another term for melasma and then we have the lentigo which are uh, the plural is lentigenous is generally considered brown pigmented spot on the skin it is harmless you know in hyperplasia of the melanocytes which is linear in its spread we have seen it earlier so these are the brown pigmentation lentigo lentigo this is a picture of lentigo. We shall we can see the melanocytes that produce melanin with melanin pigment in the linear part, so producing that brownish discoloration. These are lentigmous proliferation of melanocytes producing this color. And that is it for the terminology. You can see that there are many new words and new terms that you need to revise and you go through once, twice and again, once and again and again. You need to go through it through the terms. Can, now we come to the quiz, sec to the quiz section. Can you identify 10 of the structures in the next slide? I would like you to mention some of these structures to give them names to know what are these and what do you mean by this and what are these structures. You try to name these uh, structures what are they some of them are very simple and some of them you need to go and read or just move the picture from the core point and then you can have a look at the or you can revise the normal history quiz number two what are these skin lesions what do you call these small skin lesions that are filled with something like pus or something what do you call them Quiz number three, identify two abnormal findings in this skin microphotograph. Can you tell me what are these? What do you see in this skin? What do you see? Do you see bright areas between the layers? What do you call them? Quiz number four, what is the name of this nail disorder? What do you call it? You have to know how to call it, okay? After reading the lecture once again you can answer this question how would you name these two skin lesions how do you call them number one and number two quiz number six use a pencil and a paper please provide a pencil and a paper i'm going to give you something to draw the terms in the next slide because there are too many please provide pencil and paper and then open the next slide okay i would like you to draw all these lesions how to draw a macule and how to draw a patch and then a papule a nodule leg a vesicle bulla and ballista please try to do all these drawings you are going to understand this. these are the references and thank you very much